Emil O'Carroll, good week in training this week after that important win over Sheffield? Yeah, yeah, it's been a good week. We've got another training session tonight, so oh, the lads were very intense last night, which is good. Something we've, we've been driving for the last couple of weeks, you know, trying to drive the intensity of our, of our practice. So, um, yeah, we came away from training quite satisfied yesterday. It's just important we replicate that and make sure we prepare the best we can for the weekend. You've mentioned previously about raising the intensity game by game at the business end now as we head towards the playoffs. What, what does that look like? Uh, probably not what Sunday was like. You know, I think taking the game to that next level, you know, trying to keep the ball in play, um, you know, having some vigour in our in our contact in the collision area. And I think we did it for periods, but you know, when you get to them playoff games, which hopefully we'll be involved in, it's uh, quite relentless and, and it needs to be. So we're just talking about trying to drive that and we're the ones that lead it, not having to play catch up. Is it fair to say even though that it was a win against Sheffield, the message this week has that the side can do better and there is certainly room for improvement. Oh yeah, absolutely. Look, we were really happy. Uh, you know, Sheffield they were a, a quality outfit and certainly tested us. I, I thought the the boys did really well in terms of trying to execute the the plan that we put to them. Um, you know, there's some things in there that obviously we want to be better at, but I thought overall we were good. It's just important that we we hold on to that now and continue to be better. And we always have to look how we can be better. Three wins on the bounce now. Winning obviously breeds confidence. How important is it? to the side that they go from strength to strength now with, like you said, the players just around the corner. Yeah, yeah really important, you know, if you we're lucky enough to be in them, which hopefully we are, you want to go in with a, with an element of consistency and, and rhythm to your game. I feel like we're, we're slowly getting that, um, you know, and that's, that's helped by having people on the training field and having bodies back, which is which has been really good. I've certainly noticed a difference in our training since since that's happened and since we've got some bodies back out of the um, out of the physio room so that's good and hopefully that'll continue you mentioned last week that with players back and you're pretty much at 90 percent uh, full health now you've been able to do different things in training can you describe a few of those yeah it's just you know you might you might do some 13 v 13 and the you know the the team that you're running against is just of a, a, of a higher quality not only that, the people that uh, you know you're practicing against obviously are, are eager to impress and, and want to be in the team, so it just drives the intensity of the of the session as well. In terms of some of the splits that you might do, it might just look a little bit different. So rather than us being real limited with numbers and having you know eighteen to twenty bodies on the field, we're getting twenty seven, twenty eight now, sometimes even twenty nine. So it's just changes the structure of your training a little bit, and there's an element of competition. Recent games against Whitehead and Dewsbury, and even Sheffield on on Sunday have probably highlighted that sort of direct down the middle approach which is clearly working off the back of those sort of f strong forward runs um, is that off the back of simplifying that game plan is that going to evolve as you know the weeks move towards the playoffs I think it's just really important that we as a group understand what our strengths are and you know with that there comes an element of patience and that's something that we've been you know talking about a lot as a group like what does playing patient look like and I think you know trying to take some juice out of the opposition with what we've got in our arsenal is, is really important and then you know the points will come the back end of the game and that's probably how our last couple of games have gone you know been in real tight games and then probably the back end of each half we, we've come through the other side because we've completed relatively well uh, although that needs to be better but we've, we've built the game which is something that we've, we've not done for, for large periods through the season so um, we certainly don't want to just be a team that goes five drives and a kick that's not how we want to play I think we've got good balance with that now we earn the right and then you know, if we, we see an opportunity, we've got we've got some really good personnel who play eyes up and, and take that. When I asked you after the game about Jordan Lilly's influence on that Sheffield uh, performance, you said you need to watch it back in full um, to give a fair comment. What's the view? Yeah, I thought he had a real strong game. I think he's getting better and better. You know, it certainly helps him having some consistency in terms of his, his spine, the rest of his spine. So I've been really happy with Jordan all year. Uh, you know, I think he's he's had to do it tough being the only half back on the field but he's done a great job for us and you know a lot of that where we're sat now is down to to him doing his job so you know i want him to keep getting better and we keep challenging him uh, i think he had a real good rounded game at weekend had lots of energy and you know certainly defended really well uh, along with the rest of his edge so i'm happy with jordy at the minute Harry Bidaro left the field early doors. What's the latest with him? Yeah, we're just we're, we're getting it looked at. He's having some imaging, but he's, he's looking better and better every day, which is uh, a real positive. So we certainly won't rush him just with the nature of the injury, but he's uh, you know he's looking positive on Ariba. What's his return to play look like? We don't know that. Not this point in time. No.
Losing a rebe, how important was it to get through that adversity, especially against a big physical opponent um, in Sheffield? Yeah, obviously, you know, if you if you lose a middle, you you've not only got a couple on the bench, but we lost him early on, which you know can cause a bit of disruption. But I thought the likes of Evan, who came on, and Dan Swift did, did did their part. We managed to come through the other side. So yeah, it's a, it was a concerning one. Obviously, losing a middle isn't great, but then losing someone who's probably been our best all year, you know. Um, but it gives an opportunity for other people to stand up, and I felt that they did that. George Tafu was suspended for two matches for dangerous contact on, on Chris Wellham. Your thoughts on that one, especially after the on-field referee said the, the contact was, was okay. Is that a frustrating one to take? Yeah, it is. Look, I don't want to make too much of a comment on that. Um, but we'll, we'll support George. I think you know he's been working really hard on his game and you know to take that out. He's had a lot of suspensions this year and by his own admission he'll say that a lot of them have been deserved. We, we do feel this one is a little bit harsh. You know, I think it was a, it was a great hit. I think that's what people want to see in our game. It was safe. It wasn't a high high shot or anything like that. You know, he hit him in the midriff. It's exactly what we, you know, we're probably wanting from our game at the moment. Um, but for one reason or another, it's it's been seen as a. I think it's a late hit the charge, um, which for me is probably marginal. But I understand where the game is at at the moment, and you know, you you just have to accept it sometimes. So we're gonna have a good look at it, and we're not sure whether we're, we will appeal or not yet. Uh, there's some concerns there just with uh, George's history. But I, I feel like it would be you know, fair for us to, to probably challenge that, certainly the grading, because I, I felt it was a fair hit, and as did the official on the day. It's the fourth time he's been suspended now, pending whether the club appeal or not. Do you feel there's a little bit of his, his past, previous going against him? I don't know, you're probably asking the wrong person there. You'd like to think not, because we're, we're a professional organisation, and that's not how it should be, be run. Yeah, I, confidence in the, the match review panel I, I would hope that we're, we're more professional than that um, but I, I you know I won't shy away from it I've mentioned it before I think there's been some harsh ones certainly the one early in the year uh, but I think the game has moved on from that where you know it's an accidental head clash and people are getting banned you know George knocked himself out on another player completely accidental but got a yellow card while he was snoring on the floor so I think I'm glad that we've moved on from that and there's a little bit of common sense there um, and like I said, the, a couple that he has picked up in the year that deservedly so. So um, I think this one may be a, a little bit harsh. I think that's what we want to see. That's what people come to pay to see during our game. It's um, you know a, a tough physical game, and it should be. And people know what they sign up for. And you know, no one got hurt. Well, he was hurt, but not injured. And you know, he got up and played the rest of the game. And I think the kid even said it was a great shot himself. So fair play to him for saying that. So yeah, we'll we'll have a look at that. Moving forward from that, if he is suspended, it will obviously present an opportunity for either Liam Tinder or Jack Smith. Yeah, yeah. Well, Max Lehman as well will be in the mix, so we've we've got a few options there. But I'll be disappointed to lose George. He's important to us. I think he's playing really well at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's why we have to have a, have a good think about what we do. We're doing this on a Friday afternoon. The twenty-one man squad's been released. More headaches this week for you, Eamon. Would you like to see him on the side? Uh, no, no headaches. I think it's a good position for us to be in. Um, you know, it's good now. I've had some conversations with some lads saying, look, it might get to the point here where we're not selecting you and you, you feel like you've had a, a fairly strong game, but it might just be something that you've missed, whether it's a kick pressure or running past the tackle and not getting in third man. So I think that's a really healthy position for us to be in as we're going into what's hopefully playoffs uh, for us. So no, it's not headaches. The, the, you know, it would be quite easy to, to make our decision. It's just, um, you know, now having to have them conversations with other lads and keep them enthused and make sure that they're helping us prepare the best that we can. Jared Summers named in the squad, is it fair to say he's back from his shoulder complaint injury? Yeah, he's feeling better now, so he's in contention. Mitch Suter's missed the last two. He's named, is it fair to say, we'll see Mitch Suter play a part on Sunday? Yeah, I'm not sure yet, mate. We've, um, we've got another training session tonight, so we're, we're going to see how, how that goes. But, one thing I will say is Mitch has prepared really well and helped his teammates, which is something that we want to see. And you know, there's been a bit of frustration there for Mitch um, because he's not played and he's desperate to play, and he's he's played a large part in in this year as well. So I'm sure we've selected him. He'll, he'll have a storm. I'll be making back after playing in the reserve grand final at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really important that he went and did that that for Wigan. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say Harvey's been great for us, so it's good to have him back, whether that's just for numbers for training or he's selected. Again, we're not sure, but um, you know, utmost confidence in, in Harvey if he's uh, selected. It is back the Bulldogs at Barakad on Sunday, a side who 
inflicted defeat on Bradford back in round nine. Yeah, yeah, they, they schooled us and said that to the boys this week when we played them. Um, uh, sorry, when we trained. So, really important that we, we don't hold on to that too much. We, we know there was certain areas of the game that we were off massively, but there were still opportunities to win that game. But we are going to have to be very good. I, I really like Batley. I have for a long time. I think they're a team of tough individuals who just keep turning up. I really like what they're about. So, they're going to certainly challenge us this week, and I'm, and I'm glad as well. It'd be great to see how we respond. and. Um, I think we've got that element of freshness within the group and the, the boys are, you know, not get looking too far ahead but are fully aware of what's ahead and how important this game is. Has there been any reference to what happened earlier on in the season at Battle this week? Uh, no, not a, not a big focus. I think I just said that, you know, I repeated it. They, they did a job on us last time, so don't, don't underestimate them. What dangers and threats do the pros? I think their pack is obviously very well experienced and will challenge us physically. Um, that's a big one and I just think they're, they're spying, you know, to complement that. Um, you know, they've got threat throughout the whole park, really. So, again, we're going to have to be very good. I think the squad's really rounded um, and they'll challenge us throughout. So, they'll try and come through the front door and if they can't, they've got the ability to move the ball on us and, and pull some threats on the fringe as well. So, it's going to have to be a, a, a big one from us. When we spoke to their coach, uh, Mark Moxon, he admitted that the playoff picture for them is pretty much out of sight for this season. But you know, his message to the side is is you know to keep challenging, build you know for twenty twenty five. Yeah, and I think the I think they're a proud group as well. So they won't just think, oh, well, the playoffs are out of it now. So we we throw the towel in, or we put the cue in the rack. I think they'll be coming here with a, an element of confidence. Um, they'll see some things in our last couple of games where they feel like they can expose us. So yeah, I don't, I don't really buy into that. I know some of their individuals and I know that they're, they're good men, they're tough men and they'll want to perform. So um, yeah, and, and they'll obviously have that element of confidence from, from when we last played them. So uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't buy into that too much. What's the overall message to the team this week then? Kick on, keep performing, focus on your, your own job, get your intent right, get your effort areas right. And then we've got the, the foundation there to build off that. Um, we've got to play with an element of patience. We've, we've been speaking a lot about our completion rate and it's heading in the right direction. We're certainly completing higher, but that still needs to be better. So I think just getting the, the simple areas of our game right. And then when we do that, I feel like we've got some quality in, in our group that can expose teams. Is second spot still the really realistic aspiration that you think the club can get? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're, we've just got to focus on winning games. You know, that, that it's going to be down to us. I know then we win all three and to lose do then obviously we'll hopefully we'll be finishing third there but we, we've just got to focus on ourselves at all wants to look over the the garden fence and see what's happening elsewhere we've just got to focus on winning and um, you know we've, we've had that mindset now for the last probably couple of weeks you know we're game two of the full game block that we've targeted and we just have to solely focus on that